All right, I'm going to show you how to start a 7.3 International engine on a uh, on a stand. There's a bunch of prep that you got to do. There's a little bit of background noise. It's got another uh, truck running, but hopefully you can hear me all right. First thing is you don't want to actually run it on a stand like I'm doing. This is actually really wrong. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to hedge my bets here, and uh, by hanging it from the shop crane. Maybe um, this will stop any sort of torsional movement. You know, if you start up this engine um, and you give it a lot of throttle, it could actually flip over. So you need a run stand to technically do it right. But uh, I'm gonna go like this. I've started engines like this before. It um, hasn't been a problem. Um, another thing is um, you're gonna need power. So I got a battery here. This battery is not suitable for starting an IDI, but um, I, I'm supplementing it by jumping it from another engine as well. Uh, right now I'm getting 13.12 volts, so I should be okay. And uh, you run a battery uh, cable to the uh, to the large uh, probe on the solenoid, so that's the, the positive, and then you run a negative uh, to the block. There's the negative. Here's also some other wires that you have to use. So um, first thing is you need a switch or some sort of way of shutting off the power to the fuel solenoid. That's right there on the IP. So uh, you gotta power that. It won't work. You can't start the engine without powering the fuel, the fuel solenoid shut off. And that'll open up the flow into the IP. So um, I got a switch there that goes to the power. You know, it's, it's just jammed into the positive side of the battery. And I also have another uh, thing that you need to have, which is um, I got a, a jug of a little bit of diesel. I've run it already, so I got a, only a little bit of fuel left. And that fuel uh, goes to a fuel pump that goes down to a filter, and that goes into the IP, um, this IP hose here. Um, yeah, so um, the filter just stops any sort of particles that might be in my fuel. Um, and the uh, wiring for the fuel pump goes down to this switch here. So I got two switches, one for the fuel pump and one for the fuel solenoid. You need to collect your excess from the return lines. So I got two return lines. I could have put a T in, but I didn't. And I just have it running into a, a bucket here. So, so anyway, let's see if I can get it started. Also, I have been uh, blowing hot air into the intake. Um, I got a heat gun that I normally use for that. So I'll just jam this in like that. And uh, it warms up the intake. It's supposed to help because I'm not running any glow plugs here. I mean, I have the glow plugs in but um, I'm not powering them in any sort of way, so it needs a little bit of heat to aid in the process. Um, I don't know, I don't really think it actually helps, but I've been doing it and it seems to work. Um, a lot of people on the internet say you should warm up the intake. Uh, what's really important when you're getting ready to start this thing is you need a lot of voltage. Um, this might be enough to do it. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, um, I'm not going to leave the heat gun in while I'm running it. I'm just warming up the intake and maybe that little extra bit of warmth will, will make it work. Alright, I'm going to try to do this all in one. Um, so here, let me take this all in one take. Take the uh, heat gun out. And uh, you just need a screwdriver basically to start it might want to give it a little bit of throttle here so I'm about maybe a third of the way well that's too far like you don't want to go op wide open throttle unless you're purging the lines which I've already done um, you gotta purge the air out of the lines so there's gonna be a little bit of cranking before this process to get the air out if you don't know how to do that then you know look that up on the internet so I got a little bit of open throttle here I even took the spring off of it because then I can adjust it without having a, another person here 
So anyway, you got a screwdriver to get it started. You want you want to jump this thing is you don't want to jump it from the big nut to the big nut. It doesn't do anything. Instead, you want to go from the 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 little one to the big one in the front, the one that's getting your power supply. You jump those two with like a screwdriver or a piece of metal, and it'll tur it'll activate the the um, uh, the, the solenoid and activate the gear and, and turn it. I lost my voltage. Hold on. All right, so I'm at 13 and a quarter almost. This might start. So, the way you get it started is get your uh, throttle ready, um, turn on your fuel solenoid. And to check that, you can actually see if there's like a spark here. So, like that one, yeah, you can you can hear it clicking, and there's a little bit of a spark, and you know it's getting power. You turn on the uh, fuel pump. And you should be able to hear that clicking as well. And then you're gonna you're gonna touch these two things together. You want to hold it. You want to hold it pretty firmly on there because the engine's gonna shake, and that shaking is gonna make it really, um, you know, difficult to keep a, a constant contact there. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and see if I can do this.